A lot of people are fans of Walgreens Sensitive Skin and Clear Zinc Sunscreens. And there are video reviews where you can see how those products go onto the face and how they look on the face. Unfortunately, those products are both combination sunscreens, meaning that they combine a physical filter, zinc oxide, with a chemical one, octacrylene. All chemical filters degrade in sunlight. And since I, for one, am not reapplying my sunscreen every two hours, I need the stable broad spectrum protection that is offered by all mineral sunscreens. All mineral sunscreens also offer a level of visible light protection. Visible light contributes to pigmentary issues, including hyperpigmentation. This particular sunscreen was just $3. And since it was buy one, get one half off, I paid a total of $4.50 for a total of six ounces which is incredible. I'm about to show what it looks like when I'm putting it on, what it ends up looking like on my face by itself, and how it looks when I top it with just a little bit of tinted mineral sunscreen. The tint adds extra protection from visible light, and uh, the small amount of tinted sunscreen goes a long way to making this look a little bit more wearable. I hope you find this helpful. I also include a lot of tips on sunscreen application, so if you do find any part of this video helpful, please do give it a like, subscribe if you're feeling particularly generous, and also I'd love to hear what you have to say about what you thought of the sunscreen, or what you thought of my review. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day! In order to get the level of protection promised on a bottle of sunscreen, you need to use two grams per centimeter squared, which is approximately a quarter teaspoon. So I literally use a quarter teaspoon to measure out my sunscreen to make sure that I have the correct amount. Scrape off the excess. Now you might be able to see here despite the fact that I literally just showered and I wash my face twice a day, I'm actually accumulating crusted on sunscreen on my eyelids. So I'm going to have to take a Q-tip with mineral oil to that later today. But it's very important to make sure you don't neglect these areas for your sunscreen because if you do, which I did for 15 years, that's how you get all this aging around here. Now, if this were a day when I was going somewhere where I wanted to impress someone, after this dries, I would use eyebrow pencil to <laughs> make myself have eyebrows again. But I would then top that with some tinted sunscreen in order to make sure that I still had a level of sun protection there. Now, you'll notice it's beating up under my eyes. It does that in a lot of places, but particularly under my eyes, and I'm not sure, quite sure why. I know that the skin under my eyes is smoother and a little bit, probably a little bit more moist than the skin on the rest of my face. So I'm rubbing it in a lot there, but very gently because its skin is very delicate. First few times I used a sunscreen, I felt like it was almost, it was similar to using a regular marker on a dry erase board. It just wouldn't seem to stick. It wouldn't seem to go on. And that sensation has sort of gone away as I've learned that I just need to really vigorously rub it in. Not in a rough way, just in a very firm way. Because you never want to do something that's going to cause sagging which rough handling would do. You can already see I'm starting to develop these little white dots that are pilling off. Oh shoot, I forgot to do my other eye. I always do my eyes first. That way I know how much sunscreen I have, rest, I have left for the rest of my face. And also if I'm adding tinted sunscreen elsewhere, I'm not going to mess it up when I then put white sunscreen around my eyes. 
A lot of people say you should apply things under your eyes using your ring finger because it's supposedly the most gentle, but your pinky finger is obviously smaller and therefore it's less likely to distort the anatomy of the skin in that area. And what I mean by the anatomy is, for instance, my skin dips in under my eye um, above my cheekbone. This is actually a little bit easier to apply than normal because I normally put it on right after putting my moisturizer on. And, but because I was setting up my phone and then washed my hands and then dried my hands, my, uh, my moisturizer has completely dried. So that might be part of it because since this is a water resistant sunscreen, it is not going to play well with things that have a high water content. Although I never had that much of a gap between washing my face and putting my sunscreen on, I have tried putting this on without putting moisturizer on first, with putting moisturizer on first, and to create a lubricated surface, I've tried putting it on over Neutrogena Hydro Boost Extra Dry Skin Gel Cream, I think it's called, as well. All of them have had essentially the same results, which you're going to see in the end here. This is the scar that I'm currently trying to treat with silicone scar patches and silicone gel, although I'm not treating it today because I want you guys to be able to see this unhindered. I also promised in a previous video that I would no longer wear the patches in videos. I really love the contrast this creates with the color of my lips. It almost makes it look like I'm wearing a lip balm when I'm just wearing Vaseline. The vast majority of people actually use far less sunscreen than they're supposed to use, but at least one study, I think multiple studies, have found that when people spend more time applying sunscreen, they're more likely to apply the amount that they should and not have any skin areas, which makes sense when you think about it. So I've already got a very dense layer on here, clearly, and yet I've only used maybe half of this. The thing is though, the, the quarter teaspoon volume estimate actually does, the accuracy of that estimate does depend on the density of your sunscreen. Obviously, if you have a denser sunscreen, you're going to achieve two grams per centimeter squared with a smaller volume of sunscreen. And I think that might be the issue with this sunscreen. So yeah, it's about, it's about half of the quarter teaspoon. All right, so issues that we have here. So as much vigorous rubbing as I did, it still went on very unevenly and I have a lot of areas where you have these pinpoint white areas of pilling. Pilling meaning where the sunscreen sort of peels away and is not protecting your skin any longer. So obviously this is not going to provide adequate skin protection on its own. It also looks silly. So what I'm going to do now, even though this layer of sunscreen may or may not be completely dry, I'm going to add tinted sunscreen to the top of it. You're technically supposed to wait for the first layer of sunscreen to dry because when you mix two sunscreens, it can actually interfere with the distribution of the active ingredients in the sunscreen. I always get nervous about leaving the cap off of that because a botanical sunscreen, which you should generally avoid if there's a good substitute for it, which there's not in this case, botanical sunscreens are more likely to have ingredients that will oxidize the longer you have them exposed to oxygen. But yeah, I try to keep the cap on in between application points here. All right, so now we now have even more pilling than before because one of the things that contributes to pilling, actually a major contributor to pilling, 
is just a high quantity of sunscreen. However, at least the color is a little bit more human looking. Uh, yeah, it is very, it is very, very cakey though. So, so I would get self-conscious that anyone around me who thinks I'm wearing makeup will think, gosh, she really does not know how to apply makeup properly. Um, yeah. Now, on an ordinary day, when I'm not trying to impress anyone, I would just leave this as is, but just for the fun of it, I'm going to show you guys how I try to cover these under eye circles without compromising sun protection. So I have this Physician's Formula Super BB Cream. It is broad spectrum, that's the key, broad spectrum, SPF 30. And its active ingredients are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. The fact that they're minerals is also key because in the United States, the only chemical broad spectrum sunscreen we have, avobenzone, is not stable. Do not trust it. Actually, while we're at it, I'm, I'm going to cover the mask knee that is still showing. A lot of it was covered up by the thick layer of sunscreen anyway, but there we go. Just so we are giving this sunscreen combination the best chance possible in this review, uh, I'll, I will put this BB cream all over my face because I feel like in the areas where I did put it, when I patted it in, it actually resolved a little bit of the pilling. I think either because of the heat, heat from my fingertips or the pressure, the additional blending, I don't know what, but. I actually had done this part of the video perfectly and then I realized that for some reason my phone had not recorded it even though I could swear I pressed play. So unfortunately, this is the best we're going to be able to do because I have to get to a physical therapy appointment. All right, so as you can see, the final look is still pretty ghosty, still cakey. You can see the contrast to the rest of my skin. And let's see if I can get you a closer up look here. Yeah, I would try to continue getting you better angles, but I have a physical therapy appointment that I think I'm already going to be late for. Shows you the contrast between my skin and my 